want you to hit me as hard as you can. Lance Felchek here for Air on the Head's The F***ing Black Sheep, where we take a look at the opposing opinion of the genre's most divisive films. In a cure for wellness, Dane DeHaan travels to a mysterious spa in Switzerland to locate and retrieve the missing CEO of his company. Things are not what they seem as the creepy Dr. Vollmer, played by Jason Isaacs, has ulterior motives. And Jason Isaacs can play a goddamn villain. For just a case in there. It's a real pleasure. But... This isn't the first time he's played a doctor. An older horror sci-fi film has Isaacs play Dr. DJ. And I'm talking about Event Horizon. Event Horizon is an old school horror film that mixed Alien with The Shining. It was a bigger budget film with a price tag of 60 million and 90 for inflation. With its dark nature, disturbing imagery and slower pace, it's definitely a relic from a different time. No studio would put that much money into something so particular nowadays. And it's why, despite its divisiveness, it turns out to be one of the better space horror films ever. Paul Anderson, or Paul W.S. Anderson, if you like wasting time, came fresh off the success of The Amazing Mortal Kombat. I'm a 90s kid, so there's a bit of a bias. And wanted to dive deep into the horror genre, going for something darker to balance out his fun and lighter effort on Mortal Kombat. Paul Anderson has become a love-hate director, with his bizarre choice of spending the last 14 years doing mostly Resident Evil films? N not a fan, sorry, but I'm not here to hate. I can see why many have written him off. Now, his earlier work is quite good and the man has an eye for style. As far as directing, Event Horizon is his magnum opus. His camera movements are always motivated, and this helps build the tension effectively. Now, these are standard techniques and he's sure as shit ain't reinventing the wheel. But the man has more to offer than meets the eye. The lighting is perfect in this film. They use an off-green, soft, fluorescent look, and nothing is lit with any comfort. The style of the gravity drive is absolutely breathtaking and terrifying at the same time. This is the main plot point and the reason for the conflict in the film. You can tell they put the most time into this set piece the spiked design on the ascending walls, to the futuristic language-esque design on the magnetic rings. Now the big issue that comes up time and time again is the influence of Alien. The Event Horizon and the Lewis and Clark have more of an alien ship influence than I would have liked, but its lived-in look at least makes sense story-wise, and brings me to another point. Alien was a game changer. It defined what spaceships and any space setting looked like and still does to this day. It was so crucial to the sci-fi horror genre that once it premiered, we were never the same. So is there an alien influence in Event Horizon? Of, of course. Intentional or not, it seeps in here, as it did with every space film since. It isn't fair to single out this film. It's not alone. Paul and the team made a strong effort to give the Event Horizon ship its own distinct look. The ship's architectural design was modeled after the Notre Dame Cathedral. The exterior design of the central corridor is directly based off the designs of the stained glass windows, and the interior has a stained glass-like lighting setup. In the medical bay, we have the Gothic cathedral-style pillars with the Renaissance-type windows in the back. This gives the ship character, and having such a religious overtone was a cool idea, as the ship literally goes to hell. Speaking of hell, the ship comes back from another dimension, essentially sentient. They vaguely mention that this may be hell, and from the warning message left by the last crew, and the quick cuts of said crew being tortured by the ship, it's safe to say that's exactly where it's been. You can't leave. She won't let you. The ship slowly starts driving everyone insane and even gives flash forwards to its hellish plans. These images were a massive undertaking, showing each character dying at the mercy of the ship. Each shot is set up like a painting, and has a twisted Jerome Witkins-like design to them. These shots were also cut down because of studio demands and a bad test screen. Do we really need those? 
I do have a few problems that pop up from time to time. This has more to do with the studio than anything. The most obvious interference is in the third act. The whole movie has a slower build. Hell, we don't even board the ship until the 20 minute mark. Then it ends with fistfights and gunplay. It basically runs through the finale, and this change of pace is awkward. The confrontation between Dr. Weir and Captain Miller is cool visually, but lacks any weight because of the obvious rush. Of course Event Horizon isn't on the level of most classics, but surprises me that it gets the level of hate that it does. This was a film that was manhandled by the studio, and the cut that was released was heavily compromised. With that being said, it still comes off strong. From the great casting of Isaacs, Fishburne, and Neil, to the beautiful imagery brought on from hell, Event Horizon handled itself with grace and put a solid effort into constructing a true haunted house film in space. Do you agree with me? Maybe you think I'm crazy. Let me know in the comments, my friend. And until next time. <laughs>